they said they said a value on it as one million and so they placed one million into this big pool and then they started to do what with it they started to roll it then hypothecate it on so pretty soon that one million turned into who knows what but the account is so large folks don't worry about overspending I guarantee you right now the one world government they're not worried about overspending it all right but that that those those figures I hate to use the word dollars but let's just say let's do, can I use this thing without getting into any kind of trouble all right so here, here you know there's there's something of value out there in that but remember that the, that the dollar figures that exist in this account right here are produced by accrual. That this, this, these, this money here is bookkeeping entry money. It's book money, or what we call money of account. See? It's hollow. It has no value associated with it yet. It may or may not have value associated with it ever. But the only way that it will ever have any value associated with it is when you labor and you redeem the bookkeeping money and turn it into money, or asset money, or money of account. Now let me ask you, if you reach in your pocket and you pull out a $1 Federal Reserve note, is that bookkeeping money or is that asset money? I didn't give you enough conditions yet, did I? <laughs> if you earned it by your labor, what kind of money is it? Asset money. If you found it laying on the street, you just walking by and pick it up and put it in your pocket, what kind is it? Money of account. See? And so you understand those two different things we've got going on here. But in any event, when this account here was set up, it was strictly all bookkeeping entry money. It has no value until you labor and redeem it. And then it becomes something of value. But anyway, the only on this particular account here, the only party who can put any value into that account is this guy right here who has that account number assigned to it. See? I can't I can't contribute anything to that number. You can't contribute anything to that number. Only this party here can contribute anything to that thing. Now, if that's the case, who has the right to all the equity in that account? Now, the laborer is worthy of his hire. And that's where it's accounted for is over here. He's the only party that has any right to that remedy right there. Until you do something stupid. And you might do something stupid. Well, we'll get that in a minute. All right, are there any questions about this concept here of this foreign side is trust? You understand what we got going on here? Okay, you might have some questions later on. All right. Now, because uh, this guy right here uh, basically is lazy. Or stupid. Or both. I'm only funding now. All right, be, because he perhaps he got tricked. Maybe anyway, a corporation came to him and said, "Hey, you know what? We got we got uh, we got accountants in our corporation. We got vice presidents. We got presidents. We got police. We got armies. We got all manner of things right here. And we can we can give you a package deal. We can give you a package deal over here that you're really going to like." He said, "Cool." They said, okay, but all you got to do is sign this little piece of paper right here. He said, give me the paper. Give me the paper already. You know, I'll sign it. All right. So what happened was they put in front of you a piece of paper that somewhere on it said SS5. Now, what the SS5 was basically was an application for another benefit privilege. But in, in particular, if you look at it, it's, it's a power of attorney. So it gives the party who issued that particular piece of paper power of attorney to do what? Access your prepaid account. And so at that juncture, what you've done, you, you have surrendered to a corporation 
a right or a remedy that you previously had exclusive right to. Now, is that bad or is that good? Depends on how you look at it. I mean, most folks would be happy to have the government take care of them. But some folks, you know, who are kind of hard-headed and that kind of thing say, well, maybe we made a little mistake. And so uh, I know that probably some of you <laughs> have decided maybe you made a little mistake on that and so you want to correct it. And so we're going to help you to show you a few ideas how you can go about to, to correct that problem or we can show you how you can utilize that particular thing and take control of it. So you can do whichever one you want to do. But uh, <clears throat> we, we have the technology to do either, is what it amounts to. So anyway, we'll just write you know, a little bit of power of attorney over here on this so you understand that the, you know, you, you've given the United States Corporation power of attorney over this uh, prepaid account, which actually belongs to the IMF. And you understand that the United States Corporation is not a part of the IMF? You understand that? The United, the United States is just a separate corporation. It's, it's not one, it's not the one world government. It's a, it's a predatory corporation. Yeah, it's a predatory corporation. <clears throat> That's why I was saying yesterday, for those of you who might not have been here, we, we had talked about uh, Title 26 of the United States Code as, as being as not being positive law. And I, and I, I maintain I don't care because it's Title 26 that keeps the corporations in check because Title 26 is, it demonstrates that, that, that there is a legitimate tax on a franchise. And so, if you don't have Title 26 in place, how in the world are you going to keep the corporation, such as the United States, from just running over top of you? So you got to put a check and a balance onto them. But anyway, without getting off onto that, so, so when this application for this benefit privilege was set up, there were certain things that were given, and uh, one of them was you got a, a new number that you could use. had nine digits in it because they like to use it for international trade and so forth. That's what you call social security number. Now the social security number is demonstrates uh, what, that the first off there's a new account. It ain't the same account as this one. It's a new account. And because they've established a new account, they've also established a new title. And that new title they established was this one right here. It's that in all capital letters. Now there again, folks, it ain't, it ain't evil. It's not bad and not wicked or anything. It's just the style. It's the style they use in that particular venue. I mean, we used to get into arguments, you know, with all the clerks and everything. Well, your computer, your computer will print it out that way. They said, no, it won't, it won't print it out that way. We just got into arguments carrying on and fighting and carrying on the courts and everything. It didn't do no good. Because this is just the style that they use. It's not evil. <laughs> it ain't wicked or nothing like that. <clears throat> and, and, and this, by the way, folks, this number it ain't the mark of the beast. Don't bite those that man. That, that, that number there is not the mark of the beast. It's the insurance policy number. That's all that it is. And so if you want to utilize this in or make a claim against this insurance policy right here, so then what do you have to use? The right title and the right number. There ain't nothing inherently wicked about that. All right. Now, because there was an exchange of value, there was a new trust that was set up. And this, some people call it a SESTA-K trust. If I can spell it. That's the K trust. Some people argue with that and say it's just an implied trust. Whatever it was, it's, it's still there. What do you call the thing? It's still there. But it differs. It differs in nature from this other original trust that was set up. It differs in its nature. Because in this trust over here, what you have basically done is you have subrogated. Subrogation. And what that basically means is, is that whereas you have some kind of right or defense in this area over here, you gave it up. Any time that you take insurance, folk, you're subrogating your rights and defenses to the insurance company. 